Greetings, students. Let's make Pong. We'll start by creating the parts of Pong that you already know how to make. Um, you've made a ball that bounces off of all four walls, and I know that in Pong, I want a ball that bounces off three walls. In the Pong that we're going to make, the paddle is going to be on the left-hand side here, and I think I'm going to make the paddle follow the mouse coordinates. So let's just create the stuff we know how to do, and then we'll look at the hard parts. So if I'm going to make a bouncing ball, I know I'll need an X and a Y, and an X speed and a Y speed. Um, we could also make a ball color. I'll leave that up to you. In setup, let's set the values. So I think I want the ball to start at 300, 300. For now, let's set the X speed to be 2 and the Y speed to be 7. Um, I think eventually we're going to want the ball to start off heading in a random direction rather than the same direction every time. But this is a nice, simple way we can start to make sure that our program is going to work, and then we can make it more complex later. All right, inside draw, I know I'll need to draw the ball. So I'll have an ellipse at x, y. I'll give it a diameter of 60. I know I need the ball to move. So I'll have the x position changed by the x speed and the y position changed by the y speed. And I know I want it to bounce off of three walls. So I'll test to see if x is larger than 600. And if it is, I will reverse the x speed. I will also check to see if y is going off the bottom of the screen and reverse the y speed and check if y is going off the top of the screen and reverse the y speed. OK, let's test what we've got so far to make sure we're happy. So we've got a ball, and it bounces off of three walls. And when it gets to the edge, it goes off the edge. All right, let's make the paddle. So. I know the paddle, I'm going to need to store its x, y position. So I'm going to store, I think I'll call it paddle x and paddle y will be the x and y positions of the paddle. And we'll set them up in setup. So paddle x, let's see, if I want it to be on the left hand side of the screen, I can set it to something like 10. Y, I can start it in the middle of the screen. Um, Let's draw the paddle first. So I'll draw a rectangle from paddle x, paddle y. That's the upper left-hand corner. I think I'm going to make it maybe 10 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. You could make all of these things variables if you wanted to. So you could have ball width, ball height, paddle width, paddle height. And that might make it more flexible and nicer. All right, so I've got a nice looking paddle now, but it's not moving around. So I'm going to think, how can I move it around? I want it only to go up and down. So the only variable I need to change is the y value. And I think I'm going to have the y value be exactly equal to my mouse's y value. So up here, I will say paddle y is my mouse y. So every time in the loop, I just set the paddle's y coordinate to be the same as my mouse's y coordinate. And that seems to be working fine. So the only thing we're missing now is, well, actually, we're missing a couple of things. But the, the next immediate problem is making the ball bounce off of the paddle. So let's try to do that. Um, I'm going to put the if statement here with the rest of our if statements. I'm going to add some comments so that we remember what this is about. Is the ball bouncing off a wall? Is the ball bouncing off the paddle? As we talked about in class, um, this is not going to be perfect. Um, we're going to aim for collision detection that is pretty good, but will maybe sometimes fail. And we can think about how to improve it more later. So what I'm going to ask is I'm going to ask if the left-hand side of the ball has passed the right-hand side of the paddle. So let's see. The ball is at x, and it looks like the ball's diameter is 60. So its radius is 30. So if I say x minus 30, that's now I've moved 30 pixels to the left of the ball's center. So that must be the left-hand side of the ball. So if the left-hand side of the ball is smaller than the paddle's x coordinate plus the paddle's width, because remember, paddle x is the left-hand side of the panel, uh, sorry, the paddle. And so if I add 10 pixels, that's brought us now to the right-hand side of the paddle. OK, so if the left side of the ball is smaller than the right side of the paddle, and 
I want to know if the ball is vertically centered on the paddle. So I want to know if the center of the ball at y is smaller than the top of the paddle. Let's see, where's the top of the paddle? Uh, it must be paddle y. Wait a minute, do I want it to be smaller then? Let's think. I don't want smaller than would mean it was above the paddle. I think I want to know if it's below the top of the paddle. So is the center of my ball below the top of the paddle and is the center of the ball above the bottom of the panel? So above the bottom of the paddle is paddle y plus whatever the height is, which is 100. All right. So I've got three tests. I'm testing is the ball so far to the left that it's hitting the paddle? Is the center of the ball below the top of the paddle and above the bottom of the paddle? And if all of those are true at once, I must be hitting the paddle. Let's put a print statement just to make sure that our collision is working. Um, so I'm going to say hit the paddle if it's hit the paddle. And we can look to see what happens. So I'm looking at my console down here to see if it hits the paddle. So it's bouncing. Oops, I missed it. Oh, that's weird. It's saying hit the paddle. So we can think about why that is in a minute. So it, it definitely looks like it's it's correctly detecting hitting the paddle, but maybe it's also detecting hitting the paddle when it's not actually hitting the paddle. Let's add, uh, let's see, if it hits the paddle, I think I want its x speed to reverse. So I'll reverse the x speed. And let's test it, but let's make it move a little slower. I'm going to have it go towards my paddle to start with. All right, so here we go. Great, so it seems to have bounced off my paddle okay. So I'm going to have a score, I think. Or let's not have a score yet. Let's have it reset if it hits the left-hand wall. <clears throat> so I've got all these tests for hitting the other walls. Let's test if the ball hits the left-hand wall. If x is less than 0, then I want to reset the whole game. Let's see, how am I going to reset the whole game? I guess I'm going to set the ball back to the middle and... Maybe if I had a score, I could subtract from the score or some other things. But I think right now, I just want x to be back to 300, y to be back to 300. Maybe we can set the x speed to be something different. If we were randomly generating the speeds, uh, we could do something else there. Let's make this 3. All right, so let's see if that's going to work. So if I miss the ball... Ah, all right, so I missed the ball, and it looks like it reset back to the middle. So this is going pretty well. Let's add some improvements, and then we'll fix the bouncing off the paddle. So I think I want to display a score, so or maybe number of lives. So I'll have lives equals 3 to start with. And if you want to display text, remember you'll need a P font, which you will have to import. And down in here... I will say font equals create font. I'm going to use Georgia 32. And then you have to say text font font in order to tell it that you want to use this font as the font for displaying your text. All right. Um, let's go to draw. I'm going to draw the font. Uh, I'm going to draw the text the same place that I draw everything else. So I think I'm going to display it after this stuff. I will say text lives. I think I want it to display at the right hand side of the screen. So let's have it be at maybe 550 by 50, something like that. And let's see what it says when I run it. Cool. So I got three lives there. Um, but the lives aren't going down whenever I miss the ball. So let's have the lives go down when I miss the ball. I've just got to think what's the if statement that happens where I miss the ball. It's this one. So at the same time as I do this other stuff, I think I want to subtract one from lives. Lives equals lives minus one. You can also say lives minus minus, which means the same thing. Let's check to make sure that works. Cool. Two. And then one. 
and then it'll go to zero, and then it'll go to negative one. So I think we need some way of ending the game when we get to zero. So let's do this. We can say if lives equals zero, we'll end the game. Once you watch the video on modes and how to have different modes, you could have it enter a game over mode. I think instead I'm going to um, say system.exit, which is a short way of just having it exit. So let's try that. Cool, so that's worked. Um, let's make one last improvement. I would really like to be able to generate uh, random directions for the ball. So let's do this. Uh, I guess here we'll start the x speed going that direction, but we'll make the y speed random. I'm going to have it be random between negative 6 and positive 6. So I'll have negative 6 plus math.random times 13, because this is between 0 and 12. So when it's 0, my y speed will be negative 6, because it's negative 6 plus 0. When this is 12, my y speed will be positive 6, because it will be negative 6 plus 12. All right, uh, when I reset the ball, I think I want to reset it to those exact same two things. Because right now when I reset the ball, I'm setting its x and y speed always the same. All right, so now, oops, I got it. <laughs> Good test. Great, so it looks like it's working. Uh, tune back next time, and we'll see how to think in more detail about that collision between the ball and the paddle.